So you're pitching a VC and they ask you, what will be your use of capital? How are you going to spend it? Let's find out what the answer is to this now. Ask Alex. Ask Alex. Because you don't know what you don't know. And if you don't know, now you know. Yeah. So what does investor mean by this? Literally, how are you going to spend my money and why? If investors going to give you money, they very much care how you're going to spend it. Yes, you're going to complain that an investor thinks you've got a crystal ball and can see magically into the future and become preoccupied with that exact number. But your numbers will be wrong and they'll never be right. The key thing is that they can look stupid. And <laughs> this is what you want to avoid. You very much need to know what you're going to do with every dollar. But broadly, VC cash is super expensive, so you better need it for a reason. Otherwise, just don't raise. I mean, your financial model exists to show that there is logic as to how much you're going to spend and where specifically and when. You add commentary as to why. Your financial model can be very important. And I've written a great blog around this, which you check out and I'll put down below in the notes. Now, since you'll never be sure how much exactly you should raise and how much you can raise, it's best to think of the upside and the downside case for the moments you can raise. So pick a baseline number you are pitching and discuss around that. Don't make it sound like you picked a number out of the hat. Your numbers came from financial analysis and what you need to achieve defined milestones. So understand that raising is a game of pass the parcel. Your angel may not fund your seed, and your seed may not do the pro rata, well, they may do the pro rata, but they may not be able to lead your A round. And, you know, your seed investor will almost certainly not lead your B round unless they're really huge and they're like Sequoia. So you need to think critically about milestones and position yourself to raise say in SaaS, the market, uh, the magic ARR number these days is around 1.5 million uh, to get your A round. So you have to do that. So when you're communicating how much you're raising, you can be an insider and say, we know we need to get to 1.5 million ARR, right? In a current market, you agree. Therefore, our execution plan will ensure we get there or exceed that. Any fundraise below that will fundamentally jeopardize that. So I typically recommend that you go to investors asking for less than you actually want. So the men you need to make sure you can actually raise the amount you ask for. You can often raise more than you asked. Um, once investors like what you're doing, they get you. And it's the compelling logic of you, know, you growing faster and being more successful by raising a larger round. You therefore need to be prepared for how you will spend that whatever half a million bucks is something you need and the million or so bucks that you want. Now, real example, I was raising money for a startup in Asia. The founder wanted about a million. We asked for 500K. Once investors got interested, they actually said, you know what? You could achieve a lot more if you raise more money. We agreed. <laughs> She ended up raising about 1.7 million, which is you know, one of the largest seed rounds ever done in Asia. Well, it was at the time anyway. Now, in the 50 Folds financial model templates, there is some fantastic source of use charts to help you uh, just answer this specific question about your source and use of the money. There's also a free source and runway calculator you can download as well. Again, I'll put links to them in the show notes below. So there are only three three buckets to communicate in terms of basically where you're spending your money, right? You've got staff, you have marketing, and then other, which is typically your GNA. Now, if you are tech heavy, then you might have a fourth box for developers. If you need to get into more details about how you're spending the cash, I wouldn't answer directly. I would, I would talk about the drivers, such as needing more marketing spend with a CAC of X dollars, and this will get you Y customers. Therefore, you need to hire more customer care staff, and customer uh, success staff to support those users, as well as maybe the server costs associated with supporting them. So make it seem like you're doing a model in your head and you know everything is connected, right? So growth will also involve more costs all across the other functions, not just in your marketing. So you do not need to talk about your SaaS spend, the number of 
pencils you're going to purchase. So don't bother with that level of detail when modeling your fundraise. Just think about what's really important. Just bucket things up. And that's the way that I do them in the fundraising models. So how? what would be an example of how you would pitch this to someone? So what do you need to say? Well, let me tell you what the key drivers are of our business. We deliver a fantastic product by hiring exceptional developers who are typically not the cheapest of people these days, right? The more features that we're able to integrate into our product, the larger the addressable market size. Our primary go-to-market strategy is via paid marketing, specifically SEM. We, of course, build in referrals to get earned customers, but we're going to scale through that channel. Uh, our customer and revenue growth is therefore proportional to the amount we're going to allocate to the marketing spend. Now, as for any startup, there's always trade-offs, right? Should we be spending more on the product? Should we be spending more on marketing? You know, there's no point in spending a lot of uh, money on marketing if we don't have a great product. And there's no point in having a great product if no one finds it. If you look at a source and use chart, you can see that we spend approximately 30% of our funds on developers, 40% of funds on marketing, and 30% on GNA. Our GNA base is relatively stable, so we flex additional funds raised uh, towards marketing and product, depending on the size of our raise and you know our, our milestones that we've de uh, de developed. Our base plan is going to get us to 1.5 million ARR, assuming a churn rate of about 2.5% monthly, which I still think is below you know industry. We think that our raise will get us over the mark, but we'd like to have more than our minimum, ideally, you know, to make sure that we're attractive so the raise actually happens. Um, our current plan requires 500k raise, but you know, we clearly have plans what we could do with larger raise. We're chatting with investors now to see what visions that they have and see if they're aligned to what ours are. So what are your thoughts? Okay, guys, that's some brief thoughts on that, potentially how you can answer that question. It's always going to be dependent on your specific startup, your stage, the level of traction that you have. And, you know, you got to sell what you got. But that's just some food for thought. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.